As we wait for the post-game press conference here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, Maryland 13, Cornell 8, the Terps are going the final four. Bruce Mason, what do you think of this? We're back again, 7-0 in the quarterfinals for John Tillman. Everybody was talking upset. Everybody was saying, oh, I don't know. It's a pick em game. It was never a game. Never. All right. Terps get off to a 3 nothing lead, 6-4 at halftime. And from that moment on, who had the better adjustments at halftime, Mason? It had to be the Terps because they came out booming. But there were times in this game where they let Cornell just that little bit back into it where there was a little bit of concern. I wouldn't say that it was over the whole time. Well, they sat on the lead, which they always seem to do, and I, they put in, uh, they took out Shockey. Put in Austin Hennings, the number 17. Shockey was so dominant that they forfeited the clamp and then yep. tried to steal the ball from him. Right. He was that dominant. I heard they had problems at the X. It showed up today. But they had a heck of a run. Cornell was ranked ninth by the NCAA committee. I thought they should have been ranked higher. And just for a couple moments there around halftime, I thought they were going to climb all the way back. And Mason, why couldn't Cornell get back in that game? Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Well, it was talked about that Jeff T., if you shut him down, Cornell's offense can't do much. And it showed today because Bryce Young and the defensive coaching staff really had him shut down. Well, you got to look at it like this. They had four goals until there were 12 minutes to go in the game. What did the Adler goal mean to all of you? I know that John um, talked about it before, but how'd you guys, how'd that make you guys feel? Yeah, he's, he's one of the, like, the funniest kids on the team. Uh, if, I mean, right when he scored that, I just ran right down there and just jumped into him, you know, grabbed him, gave him a big hug. I was, <laughs> I was just really excited for him. It, it, you know, it kind of got like Bryce, all of us, just like, wow, you know, you don't really put in that many minutes in game time, but in practice, you practice all the little things, you do all the little things right. And out here on game day, it paid off. So it's just really good for him to come in there and you know, give us another spark that I think we needed. So it was like really cool. Chris Corley's okay. I saw you talking to him yeah, after the game. It's not like his body was crushed by accident, yeah. but he's fine. He had the nastiest look coming out of the locker room yeah. I've ever seen. And you know what? I really thought Maryland was going to win this game from the time that they only beat Syracuse by one. Because you, me, and him know Syracuse was a pretender. They were. They were a pretender. But look, Cornell beat Yale as well. But for Maryland, the good side, Bubba Fairman. It was a three goals, two assists. Anthony DeMeo had a couple goals. Uh, Wisnowska scored. Everybody the, got into the it. The great thing is uh, Connor only had one. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Only, yep. He only two, had one, one. goal. Yeah. You know what that tells me? Next year's going to be interesting, but we're gonna, next year's a long way away. And behind us, Duke Hopkins warming up. Let's get into that press conference. And we will see you next week in Boston. Good afternoon from Navy.